The Justice Department has charged the Air National Guardsmen accused of sharing classified Pentagon documents online with crimes under the Espionage Act. 21-year-old Jack Teixeira faced a federal judge for the first time Friday to hear the charges against him. As the charges were read in a Boston courtroom, 21-year-old Jack Teixeira stood silently, arrested Thursday by heavily armed federal agents outside his mother's Massachusetts home, Teixeira now charged under the Espionage Act. Federal investigators accuse him of posting dozens of images bearing top-secret markings to Discord, an online gaming platform. People who uh, sign agreements uh, to be able to receive classified documents acknowledge the importance to the national security of not uh, disclosing those documents, uh, and uh, we intend to, to uh, send that message. According to the criminal complaint, Texera did cyber defense operations in the Air National Guard and required a top secret security clearance that gave him access to some of the government's most highly classified records known as SCI. Former Secretary of Defense Mark Esper said internal security systems failed. You can't think of a good reason for a 21 year old to have access to this information. No, I, I cannot think of a compelling reason, and I assume. Uh, Secretary Austin and, and Chairman of the Joint Chiefs Milley are, are probably asking those same questions. Three days before Texera's arrest, court records detail how federal investigators questioned a user of that gaming platform. Among the first records posted, an intelligence status report about the war in Ukraine. Billing information revealed the username behind the post was the defendant who used his home address. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy criticized the White House, saying they were asleep at the switch. Jim Himes, the senior Democrat on the House Intelligence Committee, responded. These things happen under all presidents. And so if you want to score political points, fine, but let's really focus on the problem here, which is an institutional problem, not a partisan problem. CBS News intelligence and national security reporter Olivia Ghazi joins us now. So, Olivia, let's talk about this 21-year-old tech, basically, in the National Guard. Why did he have such a high security clearance and how did he get access to these systems? Well, absolutely, Catherine. So, so what we learned from the criminal complaint, as your reporting uh, also indicated, was that he was cleared at a remarkably high level, TSSCI, top secret with access to sensitive compartmented information. And that can include intelligence that details sources and methods, and of course, whose disclosure can cause exceptionally grave damage to national security. We learned from the complaint that Texera held this clearance as, as of 2021, when he was just 19 years mm -hmm. old, and that he held it in this role of a cyber defense operations uh, specialist within the intelligence wing of the Air National Guard. And that role does involve him establishing and maintaining the computer networks through which this highly classified information flows. But that's, but that's the thing. He's maintaining the pipes. Why would he have access to the intelligence that's flowing through it? Right. Well, I mean, that's a good question, and that's a, qu a hard question that the Pentagon is, I'm sure, going to, to look at. The thing about it is that when you are applying for a job like that, when you know that you need a level of, uh, of clearance that high, you are signing a lifetime binding non-disclosure agreement that says you are obliged to protect this information under penalty of law. You could face the very criminal charges that he's facing right now, and you can face those no matter how young you are when you sign that agreement. So final question. Let's just talk about the safeguards. There are safeguards in place. Um, unusual activity, printing documents. How did we have almost a system failure in this case? That's also an essential question. I mean, safeguards are well established, especially in the aftermath of things like Snowden and Manning. I mean, yes, as you point out, these are very closed off systems. There are no external inputs. Anybody who accesses them is tracked. Any searches of them is, are tracked. Any printing of them is tracked. And of course, access to them is supposed to be circumscribed to a very small highly vetted population <laughs> who yeah. agrees to protect, mm -hmm. again, these documents. You heard the Pentagon say that it has already limited the distribution mm -hmm. lists that, uh, that to people who really need to know. It's looking at its classification regulations. President Biden said today he was instructing the military and intelligence community to further limit the distribution of sensitive mm -hmm. materials. But as I know you know mm -hmm. through your conversations with lawmakers, some believe a lot more needs to be done. Those mm -hmm. conversations are going to be robust, and there are already congressional briefings on the calendar for next week. Yeah, it, it will be very unfortunate if what we end up with is a very siloed community, which is exactly what we worked against after 9-11. Olivia Ghazis, thank you.